Valor points are dead. Long live Valor points. Oh man, this is crazy. This may actually be some of the best news that World of Warcraft has had in years. I know that sounds big. Trust me, I'm not bullshitting you. Blizzard have announced a complete overhaul to how PvE gear works in World of Warcraft. It's coming in Season 2, and looking at the details, it does look kind of incredible. It looks like an amalgamation of so many things that so many of us have wanted. Uh, open world, raid, and like Mythic Plus gear will all be upgradable. Now, up to an entire tier of difficulty higher. There are almost no caps on it so that it's grindable, and there is more freedom to try out different gear. There's even built-in catch-up for alts, meaning that if the implementation of this goes smoothly, this may be one of straight up the best things to have happened to World of Warcraft's core gameplay in a very long time. Now, obviously, as with all new things, there can be a few cracks, there can be potential to enable some nasty behavior, but first, I think we gotta understand what's going on. Man, 10.1, I did not think it would be as exciting as this. First, a quick thank you to you though. So, Pale Beyond, of course, our video game came out in Steam, we were thrilled about the launch. We did have some launch quibbles though. And what's been incredible is that working like with the community, Thomas, like just on Discord with you guys, we've fixed so much stuff. We've actually overhauled the save system as of yesterday. And now our, the cohort of the last few days of Steam reviews is at 97% whenever we pull the data. So thank you for your support on the Pale Beyond. Uh, it's now trending towards the 97%, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, if you want to check out the game, of course, it is our Antarctic, or the Heroic Age of Antarctic Expedition, an inspired uh, narrative survival role-playing game. It has been going down an absolute treat with people. So uh, any support in that would obviously be much, much appreciated. But with that said, let's talk about what's going on. Okay. We're going to have two types of currency coming that are replacing Valor. The first one is basically Valor again. Maybe you could say like Justice Points, but it's a bit more thematic. So this new currency is called Flight Stones. There is no cap on Flight Stones, right? You can earn them from doing just about everything in the game, including world content like Rares and Treasures, Raid Bosses, Mythic Plus, there's no word on if repeated raid boss kills give flight stones or if it's a weekly lockout. To be honest, I just kind of love to see repeated kills still drop them. Uh, you'll see why soon. You can hold an absolute ton of these um, at once, but you are limited to, Blizzard say, enough to like upgrade a two-handed weapon four or five times, which if you look at the two-handed weapon upgrade costs is expensive. Now, as your item level goes up, the costs in Flight Stones will increase, right? So if you are like a high heroic raider, the amount of stones you'll get from doing a world quest will be kind of small, right? Um, but of course, the higher, the harder content rewards way more, which means that high-end players shouldn't be spamming, say, Mythic Plus 2 keys to get loads of Flight Stones. So Flight Stones are one piece of the puzzle. The next currency then isn't actually a currency, it's an item called Shadow Flame Crests. Now, these hang out in your reagent bag and they stack super high. If Flight Stones are kind of like your Valor replacement, then maybe these crests are like your Mythic Plus score replacement. Uh, as in, it's the thing that like gates your upgrades or maybe a bit more fittingly, they're like a, like a primal infusion replacement, except that they work for all PvE gear rather than just crafted PvE gear. So. Here's how these work, right? There are four types of these crests, which basically map onto LFR, Normal, Heroic, and Mythic, with, of course, Mythic Plus key ranges lining up with that. And for the sake of fantasy, they've given them dragon names, which I think makes it feel more digestible, because you may have heard me just say, oh, you got, you know, you got a currency, then you got your crests. Look, you'll just get Whelpling crests, Drake quests, Worm crests, and Aspect crests. So, you know, they're pretty human readable as to their power. So these crests just come from doing content of the appropriate difficulty. But it's worth noting that the first two, which are the equivalent to LFR and normal raid, those can come from outdoor gameplay content as well. And as for caps, you are capped to 10 of each type per week, which uh, is, they say, more than they would expect you to use. I mean, 10 upgrades a week? 
that's a bit more than you're used to with Valor Points, right? <laughs> um, and this cap will actually go up over time. By week six, they say, quote, even if you needed a crest for every upgrade, you would be able to earn all the crests you could possibly use. So it does seem like this is not tuned to be a real stingy system. And to tie all of this together then, the way that it works is you use one Shadow Flame crest plus some flight stones to upgrade a bit of gear. The type of crest needed depends on the item level and the amount of flight stones is a little bit like how Valor works now. Uh, more for weapons and chests, less for bracers and rings. Uh, but that also does go up with item level. So if you want to craft uh, the gear instead, then the crests work just like how Primal Infusions did in Season 1, and upgrades are done via recrafts. Okay, now for another super cool bit. They call it a redundancy discount, and it's kind of genius. You only need to use a crest, right, if the item is going to be the new highest item level you've had in that slot. And I know that may sound cons uh, like confusing, so I'll give an example. Let's say you have item level 421 bracers, and you want to upgrade them to 424. That will cost you a drake crest and some stones. If you then get a different item level uh, 421 or lower bracer that you actually want to use, maybe it has a cool effect or better stats, because, uh, or has a socket, right? you'll be able to upgrade that all the way up to 424, matching the other one, but with no crests being used and half the usual flight stone cost. So a lot of your resources are going into basically increasing like the highest item level that, you have, uh, that you know, you've had in a certain slot, and that's where your crests will go. But this basically means that it's totally uncapped in upgrading gear, as long as that gear is not improving the best ever. And this basically means that, let's just say you, you know, you get a new bit of gear. You don't have to worry about improperly spending your currency. You can just go upgrade the damn thing, right? And this works for alts as well. If any other character in your account has a higher item level on the slot that you're upgrading, you will still get that 50% discount, but you'll still need to use the crest because the crest is the thing that actually correlates to, you know, going and doing the content. But it does mean that let's just say you have a mythic raid geared paladin and you start a rogue and you just want to dabble in some heroics. You'll be able to get that new rogue up to speed way quicker with this system. So the TLDR, if you are upgrading your character's item level via a piece, you'll need a crest from the fitting difficulty plus some flight stones. If you're upgrading an item, but it's not uh, progressing the item level of your character, you know, by raising up the highest you've ever had in a slot, you'll just need the flight stones and way less of them. If you're upgrading an alt and your main has better gear in that slot, you will need to do the right content to get the crest, but you'll not need to grind as many flight stones. And also, Loot will not be changing in any other way, so still expect the same amount of drops, the same Great Vault, etc. This is just more goddamn gas through everything. So really, like, this almost sounds too good to be true, right? Um, th there is technically a small downgrade from the existing Mythic Plus system, uh, so we, we need to explain how far each item can be upgraded. Basically, instead of every Mythic Plus item going the whole way to the top, now each item does have a category, and each category has eight upgrades in it. And they explain it by this table, but it is still slightly hard to understand, so we've kind of thrown together our own one, but it's easier to just give you an example, right? So, let's say you have a veteran item from LFR or Low Mythic Plus. You could use the Welpling Crests uh, to bring that up to veteran four out of eight, which is item level 411. If you then went and did, say, a normal raid, and you got some Drake Crests, you could upgrade that to Veteran 8 out of 8, which is item level 424. Now that's the same item level as Champion 4 out of 8. That's just one step below where Heroic starts. Now if you want to take that piece even higher, you won't be able to, right? You will not be able to just use a Heroic level Worm Crest on it. Uh, you will actually need to get new loot on the champion track from normal um, or a heroic item from heroic first, right? So you can kind of see how you'll overall be marching your character's gear up. 
Look, basically, you can take an item to a full tier of difficulty above where it dropped from, uh, but you will need, of course, to get the right crests from that higher level. I mean, look, the way it's going to be is you'll just hover over a bit of gear, you'll see veteran, you know, whatever out of eight, and you'll know what the upgrade cost is. And then you'll just do that. And whenever that gear says, you know, veteran eight out of eight, you'll know that you can't take it any further. So it's interesting in that, like, you, you can't get the best gear in the game this way intentionally, right? Um, it's not designed in such a way that you can just turbo farm a single thing up to being like, you know, Gigabyss. But their idea, which I think will fit more players, is that if you say dabble in Mythic, you can take a heroic item, you know, items up to a low Mythic level. Uh, interestingly, normal gear can actually go the whole way to uh, one step below Mythic, but of course only if you do Heroic and get the crests. And yes, the Mythic plus score requirements uh, that we used to have for upgrades, those are dead. But you will of course need to get the crests from the higher level keys anyway. So ultimately what this means, okay? is you get useful gear from more sources, but you still need to do the fitting difficulty to get the, you know, the rewards, which obviously makes sense. And overall to me, it does seem like a massive, massive win-win. I mean, it's just flat out, you get gear, you keep playing game, you upgrade gear. Kill a bunch of bosses, get some crests and flight stones, upgrade your gear. I mean, for Raiders, this is a massive quality of life increase. Uh, for Mythic Plus, I, I do think that it is also broadly better, um, just because, like, the way that a Mythic Plus player will be able to dabble in Raid, dabble in other things. Um, it, it just seems like a system that, sure, with some refining or whatever, uh, could be extensible and, like, actually work. Now, to talk about potential issues, Obviously not every system is perfect, so we need to red team it a little bit and think about the downsides. If items can be upgraded so much, then would we have a slight repeat of uh, Titan Forging, where people felt they needed to do multiple difficulties to get gear instead of just the gear that's right for them? Of course, that's because you can take a normal item all the way up to three item levels below the heroic upgrade cap. Uh, that means that a min-maxing player maybe will feel they have to do normal and heroic every week to get, uh, you know, to get the gear that they really need, like, say, weapons, special rare items, or strong trinkets. Um, yeah, that's an issue that exists, but what we have to remember is it's not just about an issue existing, it's about the relative weighting of that problem. You know, if you weigh up the pros and the cons, I still think the pros are kind of quite a bit larger here. I think this is a minor enough issue. This is only for the people who massively care about min-maxing, but for most of us, this kind of thing will be an afterthought at the very worst. Um, you know, just do what you're going to do, and it seems this system will reward you more and more reliably. The other potential downside is just how much things drop, right? Like, incentivizing people to play is fine, but if the crests or the flight stone you know, if the drop rate's super low or imbalanced, then maybe people will start worrying about how to be efficient in the game. Maybe people will feel bad for not playing enough. And that kind of thing can be a bit dangerous. So that's a tight balancing act. I mean, the last thing that we would want is for WoW to become insanely turbo grindy. Um, it also might take the first few weeks for the competitive players who feel the need to rush uh, to, you know, just have an absolute grind fest for like, you know, drops, crests, flight stones, they could go crazy. Um, though, if they get to make better decisions on their upgrades, then maybe they'll be happy enough because they'll feel like they'll have more control, perhaps. But overall, as I draw this to a verdict, this, generally speaking, I think, is absolutely brilliant. I mean, the whole intent here is that players just do the highest level of content that they want to, and they bring items that drop, uh, you know, the drop, like, before, up with them. And it solves just so many existing problems, you know? No caps, faster alts, mythic plus, and raid being separate. Like, now those are together. So imagine, let's just say, your guild clears normal raid. You have a bunch of normal raid gear. Then you start doing heroic. You actually start getting crests. And now you can actually upgrade some of your normal mode gear using those crests. So even if you do not get drops in a raid night, you will get more powerful. And then you think about Blizzard sometimes wanting to tune bosses over time because they want to increase those completion rates. 
uh, I mean, remember the sepulcher of the first one's issue? In a system like this, the raid group will just naturally be getting better and better and better as the weeks go on. Even take my raid group. We were at a point where, you know, sometimes just with our group comp not being ideal for loot, we just wouldn't get that many upgrades in a week. But now, if our players are getting crests and flight stones, then even if someone doesn't get an incredible piece of loot, well, they still have got resources that they can actually use. I mean, think about the chill globe if you're a healer. Not having a chill globe definitely gonna make me feel sad because it's nice having the mana button. Um, but the idea that let's just say I move from normal to heroic, I'll be able to partially take my chill globe with me. That's cool. I think that the complaints are minor in comparison to the pros. Um, this, I think, just means that you know, progressing from, say, normal to heroic won't mean having to replace all of your gear in order to feel good. We'll be able to take our normal gear and upgrade it, right? And that means that we'll be just, we'll even be able to upgrade our raid gear from doing Mythic Plus. Mythic Plusers can upgrade their Mythic Plus gear from doing raid, right? Instead of them feeling like totally separate forms of content. Um, and it also means that our time will never be wasted because if nothing drops, we still get crests up until whatever the cap is and then flight stones forever. So no matter what, if you're doing a Mythic Plus dungeon, I mean, I think this is going to feel more rewarding than just getting a minuscule amount of valor. Especially when you think about how the flight stone uh, side of things is uncapped. I, there's so much more like control in the hands of the player here. Uh, for normal raid players, you guys can do the same thing, but from gear that drops in outdoor content or in LFR. Like, you can get, uh, say, that pole arm from the rare mob that drops at a pretty high item level. You can upgrade that thing. That's cool. And if you just want to do world content, then you can use those same currencies and systems to upgrade that world content gear as, as much as you want. For the mythic players, you can bring your heroic gear up to a, you know, a, a level that um, is closer to Mythic, um, but of course, while still needing to get the best gear in the game from Mythic. And then, one of the biggest issues with Valor is, is fixed, because with Valor points, you could make mistakes, right? You could just upgrade the wrong bit of gear, and that was a seasonally capped currency, but the new redundancy discount means that you'll never be making the wrong decision with your capped crests, because really, they're just upgrading the maximum item level of that slot. And that means that if you make a bad decision or suboptimal one, you can just get some more flight stones and upgrade another bit of gear up to that item level at a discount. I mean, they even went so far as to add a specific bonus for Fury Warriors who have always been screwed by having two two-handers, where they get a special half-off discount to upgrade their second highest uh, item level weapon. So honestly, to uh, Chimes, who's the uh, dev who posted this, and the whole team who's worked in this, uh, I think the ideas in here are excellent. They are going a long way to obliterate criticisms that people have had with the existing gearing systems of World of Warcraft. This is making me excited to play. This is what, honestly, I thought that a, a change like this would be limited to a new expansion. But this is happening in patch 10.1. And here's what I think about. The next expansion is in production right now, uh, right? So. If they're doing this experiment now, it shows the direction of their thinking. It shows the experiments they're doing. Um, I mean, at this rate, by 11.0, WoW may not have any game problem, uh, problems left because they're just knocking a whole bunch of them out. So really, this is great. Um, this is the type of, uh, of decision-making that feels more in line with the players and really that feels a bit more daring because this is a large change. Right? This is a large change. I appreciate having the, well, you know, having the stones to do it. Uh, I, I do. Um, whereas, you know, you could just be very risk adverse, always make tiny little steps. But maybe it's just that thing where if, if WoW's going to truly get its players back, they need to start making big, ballsy, daring moves because it's going to take big news and big change to make people want to reevaluate their decision to leave the game. So overall, I'm pretty happy. Uh, the one place where this could fall down is just UX, like if players are confused by this, because there is the potential for confusion, uh, you can see issues there. But I think when you look at the actual goals here, even if it feels a little bit awkward because there's quite a lot in this system because it is a bit one size fits all, even if that's a bit awkward, I think that the core gameplay benefits will be worth it. And uh, look, it's just going to mean that if you log into Raid Night and you get Shagall from the boss, you're not going to feel bad. 
It's just going to kill that bad experience because you have a form of definite progression happening every time you do content in WoW. So this eliminates so much of when RNG would feel awful. Yeah, so I guess hats off to him. Good stuff. Uh, let me know what you think about this down in those comments. You can check out parts two and three, and I think four, um, of our making of the Pale Beyond documentary. And now, you know, our last few days of reviews have been trending up to a 97, certainly indicating that the major player uh, pain points have been fixed. We've done a revamp to the save system yesterday that uh, I think people are finding way more intuitive and I think just works a lot better. And uh, of course, with the game's you know, review score going up with your continued support, we're obviously looking at what we can do next because I don't like the idea of just dropping a game and then leaving it for the next one. Uh, so if you want to check out The Pill Beyond and Steam, that link is down below. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks for the, to the WoW devs for uh, making big daring moves. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>